I'm here to talk about my own stuff. Yay! <laughs> Girl, what are you waiting on? Follow me on Instagram, like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell notification. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome and welcome back. To those of you who are new here, my name is Tiffany, and I am a full-time mental health and substance abuse therapist, bringing you food, lifestyle, and mental health content by way of deep dives. I'm here to talk about my own stuff. Yay! <laughs> The thing about therapy is therapists require their clients to be vulnerable and I am going to put myself in a vulnerable state and I'm going to share with you my business. Um, so if you haven't already watched part one, um, part one is me giving you information about uterine fibroids. Um, if you have not watched that video, I will go ahead and include the link here for you to watch. I highly encourage you to watch that first. Um, so a little bit of background first and foremost. Um, my fibroids were first discovered in 2019. Um, I was experiencing some symptoms. My PCP recommended that I go to my gynecologist um, after she sent me to radiology or whatever my gynecologist um you know read the results he was like you got fibroids that's what's going on um he said that he was going to continue to monitor the sizes so in my situation my gynecologist we'll call him dr k dr k um measured my fibroids every six months so I went to go see him every six months so that he could measure the size of my fibroids and check them over time. So that when I was ready for surgery, because I would need surgery, um, we could know what was going on. Um, prior to surgery, he also recommended that I get an MRI because an MRI is going to give you a more accurate picture of how large they are in their exact location. Because when the gynecologist looks at your fibroids, they can do it transdermally, meaning an ultrasound on top of your stomach or vaginally with the ultrasound in your vagina. My um, OB did both. Um, when I went and got the MRI done, I got my MRI um, in December and um, I hated that MRI. My back was hurting laying so flat like that for so long and you have to go on an empty stomach and my appointment wasn't until 4 p.m. So I was very cranky, I was in pain and I was tearful due to the pain from my back hurting from laying flat. Different scenario to, t um, to talk about. But um, when they did the MRI, they got all the details, um, as many fibroids as the MRI machine could pick up on, of course. And I think I had, I don't know the exact number, but I had about like 15 fibroids, um, something like that. And my largest fibroid was the one that was on my left hand, on my left hand side. And it was about the size of a grapefruit. Um, it started off about the size of a tennis ball. I think I had two that were about the size of tennis balls. And then I think one or both grew to about the size of a grapefruit. Um, for me, because I am rather small, it didn't show too much. Um, my uterus was, at the time of surgery, my uterus was about the size of a 20-week pregnancy. So my uterus was the size of a five month pregnancy. Um, by the time my surgeon, uh, we'll call him Dr. R, by the time Dr. R removed my fibroids, I had 800 grams of fibroids that he removed, which equates to about 1.7 pounds of fibroids. My uterus was 10 times the size that it was supposed to be. My surgeon ended up removing 31 fibroids. And he said that the most fibroids he had ever removed at one time was 33 fibroids. So baby, let me tell you one thing about me. If I'm gonna be in the game, I'm gonna compete. Okay, so I guess I'm second place. Ain't nothing wrong with second place. So yeah, he ended up removing 31 fibroids. Um, and that is my beginning story. 
So I think what helped for me as far as my symptoms, because I wasn't anemic, as a matter of fact, um, Dr. R, who was my surgeon, told me that I had the hemoglobin of a man. That is what he told me. I was not anemic. Um, so I think that that was due to my diet, the supplements that I take, um, and just my overall lifestyle. I didn't have a whole lot of symptoms other than it affecting my bladder, meaning I had to pee a lot. And sometimes I would pee a little bit on myself, just a little bit, uh, because my bladder was like a bladder of a pregnant woman. Um, but I think because I worked out so much and I just take care of my body overall, I didn't, you know, have too many symptoms that just leave me laid out like a lot of women. Um, so I can say that I was really blessed because of that. Now, like I said, I had my MRI done in December. My MRI was done six months prior to my surgery. So that means that my body still had time to form more fibroids in the meantime. Because if you watch the first video, I have said before that a body that grows fibroids will continue to grow fibroids because they're tumors. They're gonna keep on going, give you more and more. Now, for me, because I had um, large fibroids, I ended up needing a vertical cut. But my surgeon, baby, it is a very thin line. Everybody who came in into my hospital room and they saw my scar, they was like, ooh, this is a beautiful scar. My auntie saw me laid up naked in the hospital. She was like, ooh, that is a beautiful scar. So Dr. R, baby he did his thing and that's because he is a pelvic oncology surgeon so he be in women's pelvis uteruses all the time cutting them up and doing whatever he got to do he could do it with his eyes closed okay um so yeah my surgeon was on the money my OB recommended him that's how I um ended up finding Dr. R and they're actually cool enough that they text each other Prior to surgery, um, I made like a whole plan. I mean like a whole plan, baby. I put it in my husband and like our um, joint email account and our Google Drive. So I had everything lined up by month. So my surgery was completed in June. So I started my prep work in like April, then I had May and then I had June of all the things that I was going to do, meaning like changing my diet, lifestyle things, um, all of my appointments tracked in that Google Drive. Um, one of the major things that I will share with you all that I did was um, two days prior, well really kind of like three days, three days prior to my surgery, was my last time having like a heavy meal um, because I heard that a lot of women experience hardcore gas and constipation. I heard that the gas pain after surgery was out of this world. And before surgery, I had very, very bad gas pain, like the worst that I have ever experienced. And I was like, oh my God, if this is it, like I have got to manage this now. Um, so I had my last like heavy meal three days prior to surgery. And then the two days leading up to surgery, I had only soft food or um, a salad. So I had oatmeal, I had smoothies, and then I had salad and then spinach and like salmon. Um, I wanted to do that because I wanted my digestive system to be light and easy. I did not want to be backed up because after surgery, you have to either pass gas or have a bowel movement before they will release you from the hospital. Baby, I was farting right after surgery. Right after surgery, burr, 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 burr. I was farting. I ain't got no problem with that. So I was good to go. Um, but I know that um, having a bowel movement is important after surgery. So I made sure that I ate light while I was in the hospital. Although um, the this really technically day two in the hospital. I was only allowed to have clear fluids, but after that, I could have regular meals, but I still kept it light. My hospital had good food. I ate some hummus, I had a salad, I still had chicken broth, I had prune juice. I had really light things that I wanted to make me poop. Another thing to consider 
about um, surgery or my surgery, a myomectomy, an open abdominal myomectomy, is that um, you gonna be on pain meds, okay? Um, they were prescribing me ibuprofen 600 milligrams and then oxy five milligrams. I only took the oxy two times while I was in there and I was in the hospital for three nights. Um, and then I just took my um, Tylenol or ibuprofen, whatever, yeah, ibuprofen um, around the clock. Now my hospital staff, nurses and all of that, husband included, thought that I was minimizing my pain. But as long as I was like sitting still, which is really all that you can do in a hospital bed, I didn't experience too much pain. Um, but as soon as you move, whew, ooh, it's hard. And you have to be able to walk around and ambulate while you are in the hospital. And that's a whole nother story. I'm gonna tell you about my hospital experience. Girl. So my surgery wasn't scheduled until 4 p.m., but I had to be at the hospital by 1.30 p.m. But baby, you can't eat. You can't eat that day or after midnight the day before. You can't drink. And I'm talking water, none of that. Nothing before surgery, okay? You actually have to stop your medications, all herbal stuff, no tea, no none of that. Seven days prior to surgery, baby. I couldn't have me no kombucha, nothing. So I arrived to the hospital parched. I'm telling you that morning before we left the house, I waited to brush my teeth until the very last minute because I wanted some moisture in my mouth. I was that desperate for moisture, okay? So we get to the hospital. Um, uh, we check in, blah, blah, blah. I go, they leave my husband in the waiting room. I am in the full blown hospital gown. So then he gets to come back there. Um, before he comes back, they're asking me all of these questions, making sure that I didn't eat anything that day because they will cancel your surgery. And once you get your surgery down on the books, you don't want it canceled. Okay. So I get there. And now it's time for them to roll. Oh, before they roll me away, I tell my surgeon, uh, I'm talking to him, I'm like, look, I'm stressed. My friend just died, I didn't tell you all this. I said, my friend just died two months ago while eight and a half months pregnant, okay? So, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. So he told, he told like the nursing staff or whatever, and I was just emotional, y'all. I'm about to get emotional now just thinking about it. But they rolled me away. And as soon as they started rolling me away, I start crying. Like I am bawling crying. And they're like, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. My husband is like, I'll be here when you get out. And I was just crying. And then we get to the operating room. I remember just looking around, looking at people kind of moving. It seemed like they were moving fast, not frantically, but they were just doing their job. And then they ain't give me no countdown or nothing, girl. They put that mask on me and filled my body with all them drugs and I was out like a light, like a light. Like I was done. When I looked at the hospital um, report afterwards, fentanyl, fentanyl, propofol, all that stuff is what they gave me. I ain't never done no drugs in my life besides alcohol. So my little body was like, what is the tea? Girl, I was out. So the surgery only took two hours. Remember they started at four o'clock. So next thing I know, I come to, I'm laying flat in the bed. It's all dark in the room. And I look at the nurse. I said, excuse me, ma'am. I said, what time is it? She said, it's 1030. I said, oh my God, I need to see my husband. Cause I was thinking that like, he hasn't seen me. Like he don't know what's going on. It's only supposed to be a two hour surgery. Like I didn't see my husband. And then I went back to sleep child because I was out of it and I was drugged. Then people had drugged me. All right, so day one was just surgery day. Um, when I came to, I guess that night or whatever, um, I had a catheter in me and something called a JP drain bag. Um, which was hooked on my right hand side, my catheter, I really couldn't feel. Thank God they put the catheter in me while I was under. Um, and then day two comes around and that's the day that I am on the clear liquid diet only. So they want you to kind of ambulate a little bit. So I think this was around the afternoon time. So I sat up 
um, in the hospital bed, put my feet on the ground, and you know, they had the, the little thing that's on wheels in the hospital that has like the IV fluids and all that that they connect to. I was holding on to that because I was gonna use that as I walked around the hospital floor. And when I stood up, I passed out. <laughs> Luckily, I passed out onto the hospital bed and um, I've experienced it before, so it was nothing new. I have low blood pressure. I have low blood, I have low blood pressure because I am an avid runner. Um, but having low blood pressure is a good thing because my heart isn't overworking itself. My heart is pretty even kill. When it's resting, my heart is a resting baby. As a matter of fact, I ran two 5Ks within like two weeks prior to my surgery. And the um, day before my surgery, I ran almost nine miles because I just had to get the jitters out. So anywho, your girl passed out. <laughs> and when I passed out, my husband said that the technician like wasn't prepared for it. So he like came and was like trying to help. And then when that happened, other people came rushing in the room. Um, all that I remember from that moment is the tech like going over to the sink and getting like a cold rag and putting it on my chest. And she was like, wake up, wake up. And I was just like, hmm. <laughs> and then afterwards, I was like, okay, maybe we're not going to walk today. Maybe we just going to rest. Like, get your fluids. We just going to rest. So I was like, all right, cool. So um, day three comes around, and I didn't do um, any walking early in the day. I just remember sleeping so much while in the hospital. Everything was tiring. When I ate, I was tired. After talking, I was tired. After texting people to like update them of what was going on, I was tired. Every little thing made me tired. So after that, um, I didn't walk. I didn't walk that day actually, but my iron count kept dropping. Now mind you, I have the hemoglobin of a man, so um, I, I mean, my doctor told me beforehand that that's normal, that um, women will end up needing a blood transfusion with that surgery because it is an abdominal surgery. Like that is a major, major surgery. So I ended up needing a blood transfusion. So they gave me the bag of blood. And then after that, they gave me a bag of plasma. Now, when I was um, getting that plasma, I was like, my mouth a little itchy. My eyes feel itchy. My eyes feel swollen. So I look at my husband. I'm like, are my eyes squishy? And he's like, no, you look normal to me. Now, you know men don't be knowing that. So I was like, let me look at my phone because I need to see what I look like. Girl, I took my eyeglasses off. I looked at myself and my camera and my phone. I look like Martin. Martin, when he got beat up in the boxing ring, I looked like Hitch, girl. I was having an allergic reaction. I said, do you see this? I mean, my eyes was like this. Get the nurse, get the nurse. So the nurse looking at me, she stops the plasma immediately. She's trying to get the um the doctor to put in an order for Benadryl. It's taking forever. I'm like, girl, they didn't put the Benadryl in yet. And then when they finally gave me the Benadryl, they gave me one little measly Benadryl. Now, baby, I'm allergic to pollen. So I be popping beanies every springtime. Faithfully, usually I like to take two Benadryls. They gave me one little Benadryl. I was like, okay, whatever. So day two. Well, really, that was day three, ended up being a wash as well. So day two, I passed out. Day three, I had an allergic reaction to the blood products. Baby, when I tell you the family was up in arms about all of that, the family was up in arms. So anywho, finally day four rolls around. I'm like, you know what? I need to walk. I need to walk. So I finally got up and I walked earlier in that day, that day and it hurt like hell. It hurts like hell. I did one little walk. And mind you, this is the girl who's a runner. So I was just like, this is so wild. I did one little lap. I said, I'm ready to go back to my bed. I'm ready to go back to my bed. Um, and then um, later on that day, I said, all right, I need to do another walk. 
So I got another walk in and it was a longer walk and I was very proud of myself. I'm talking in the hospital gown with the hospital socks on, holding on to the little thing. I mean, uh, but I was doing well. Everybody on the hospital floor kept calling me the athlete, the athlete. And it was calling me that because of my low blood pressure. Because every time, you know, when the shifts change, I had a new nurse. And the nurse was like, oh my gosh, your blood pressure is really low. You're the athlete who has a low blood pressure. And I was like, yes, this is me. And after I passed out, girl, they put a big old sign on my door that said fall risk. As if I was elderly. Girl, I had that big old warning sign. They had it on the marker board in the um in the hospital room. They put a mat on, by the side of my bed. I was like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. So anywho, I was able to do two walks before I left the hospital. Uh, when I left the hospital, I did not have to walk out, thank God. Um, I left in the big old maternity disposable underwear. Let me tell you something, them maternity underwears, they is cool. Um, a little pullover dress, um, some Nike slides, and my tech wheeled me right on out. Um, it's suggested that you put like a pillow over your abdomen when you're in the car um, to help with like the bumps in the road and stuff, but I didn't really have too many issues. One thing about my recovery is that my recovery has been pretty abnormal. And when I mean abnormal, I mean very good. Um, I am about a little bit past the three week point of surgery. And by day six, I walked five miles by, yeah, day six post-surgery, I walked five miles. Um, and it didn't feel too bad at all. The only thing that was killing me was the heat. So I have to get up early to do my walks. Um, so my healing journey, I think has been pretty phenomenal, again, due to my lifestyle, the way that I eat, the way that I take care of myself. And I'm just young, so my body might bounce back quicker than someone who's older. Um, so I have been pretty blessed um, as far as how my healing has been. So if you end up needing surgery, don't compare yourself to anyone. Just prepare yourself as much as possible by educating yourself and listening to other people's journey so that, you know, you can have everything that you need ahead of time. So I know like some women were talking about like not being able to walk upstairs. When I came from the hospital, I was able to go right up the stairs. Like I had no issues. And that was my hospital experience. Now the healing is um, about six weeks until I can do like anything strenuous. I'm not supposed to work out, do nothing basically for six weeks. Um, however, my surgeon at my two week follow up said that I could start running again, which I thought was weird. I'm not gonna try it, um, so I'm not gonna do it. So all that I have been doing is going on extremely long walks, and I do mean extremely long walks. My longest walk has been seven miles, which took like two hours. Um, so that's all that I'm doing as far as working out and stuff. And I'm just making sure that I'm taking care of myself so that my uterus can heal fully. So that's all that I have. If you got any questions, maybe I'll be able to answer them. Please don't be in my business too much. I'll let you know if you are, but um, that is all that I have and I will catch y'all in the next video.